Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. We have another video here of diagnosis. Uh, we have a 2015 Toyota Avalon. Uh, this car has two issues. Well, first of all, this car was in a minor collision on the left front, which is where this uh, fuse box is. So the fuse box got replaced, the fender got, you know, replaced in the bumper, so all that is fixed. But now we have two, uh, two problems. Uh, chicane light is on and the ABS light is on. So I went ahead and uh, connect the scanner, read the codes, and we have this. Uh, let me show you what I have saved in information. Sorry, drop the microphone. All right, so let me show you. So we have in the engine, we have engine coolant pump B control circuit low, and that repeats three times. And then on the ABS, we got five codes. We have the brake booster pump motor on time, abnormally. Pump motor relay, accumulator low pressure was making a noise just with the battery connected. And uh, linear solo valve offset learning undone. So looks like we have a problem, you know, with like powers or grounds or wiring. So I have also the laptop in here. Okay, we have uh, the laptop set up. I went ahead and uh, got the wire diagrams. So, make sure we are on the right page. Okay, so we have the engine water pump relay right here. And that, uh, it has a constant, uh, all the time uh, power through a 30, few, a 30 amp fuse. That will feed the, the fuse. I mean the sorry the relay that we have a constant ground and we have the wire number three on the diagram right here which is a green and the pink number five so most likely five will go over to the water pump feeding power and then computer most likely and the green wire will command the relay it on so let's go back to this uh, next page on the wire diagram so wire three will come to engine room so it's not going into the engine computer i got, got that wrong okay that one is actually activated through the efi main relay to a 7.5 relay so i'm gonna have to find that i found the uh, engine water pump relay let me show you right here on this uh so we have, actually the light is not working. This is the relay, so this will be like positioned like this. So I remove the relay to check the, this is the relay that goes right there, it's very special. It has two big uh, legs and two small ones, most likely these are the control and the other ones are the, the load. I still gotta check that power in there, make sure we got power in there. So if we have power in there, one of the legs looks like we have to have a power coming from again the EFI relay on a 7.5 which we also feed if we follow this the canister pump module and I don't have any other uh, codes as you can see coming right here that fuse feeds that wire that goes to the canister and then also number four which is on the next page on the next diagram number four will go to number two so let's go to the next page i haven't opened that one number two will be the egr valve the BSB purge valve and goes into another lag on the red too which is in the next one come on intake mass airflow meter again uh, I don't think we have an issue with that fuse because we don't have any other codes except for the water pump so I want to make sure that we have that uh, 
30 amp I'm going to set up the uh, camera on the tripod so I can work and you guys can see what I'm doing so one second guys all right so I have a test light connected to ground in here I'm gonna check make sure the test light is fine so it's lighting so that's fine so we got we should have one of those big legs should have power all the time and it does and then the other one should come from the EFI relay I guess with the ignition on let me try that yep so we have the two the two powers are right there so that's not an issue Let me check the diagram. Bring it over so we can have that on the camera as well. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see everything, but I need that diagram myself. So, so we have in one of the small ones which you have a steady ground. So let's switch the test light from ground to power you have a post in the uh, fuse box in here so that is power so one of the small ones it, this should be okay we have a steady ground in there Let me turn the light off so all right so we have everything on that relay to work doesn't mean the relay is working uh, I think the next step will be to follow again this is for the water pump so we have everything in there which you have in the pink wire all the way to the water pump which is on the other side in the on the front of the engine on the rear looks like it's showing me that that's where the water pump is so going into the other diagram let me show this to you guys too Oops, in there yeah, it's a little twist, but I think you guys can get the idea. So we have that pink wire that goes to a red on the connector. So that's probably going to help us out. Uh, we have a, 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 a red, a white, sorry, it's a white with a black. No, I'm sorry, a white with a black is the ground. And then the red should be the battery positive for the pump. So let me find out where that is, and I'll set the camera again. I will put the relay back in place. I will put the relay back in place and see how it goes. All right. All right guys, I decided to switch gears a little bit because uh, I noticed that this is the relay that was here which is for fan. It's exactly the same type of relay. I noticed that. Let me put the ignition on the car. One second. This is the one was in here. I noticed that you know right now the ignition is on. I should. I have everything for the relay to click at least. And nothing. When I put this one. you guys can hear it so much noise in the shop hopefully you can pick it up in there so what we have a problem in here is a relay so the water pump issue uh, I already erased the code it has not come back the water pump is uh, just a damaged relay probably part of the accident so I'm going to order this one I'm going to proceed right now with the brake uh, with the brake issue and see what I can find. Let me start the video, guys. I right, removed the air filter, so a hole by two number 10 millimeter. I removed the wipers, which the cow plastic bar was already removed by them. Uh, the wipers.
wipers is just two 10 millimeter bolts and then the resin is 10 millimeter too. I have those in here. Okay, right now I'm going to check that connector in there. Just, uh, let me get a screwdriver to remove that. Let me make sure the ignition is not on. Okay, the ignition is not on. Just, you know, that's a prevention, but truly, I mean, we already got closed, so it's not that we're gonna set up something new. Okay, so definitely we're going to check this uh, upper red ones as far as uh, the wire diagram is calling me, it's calling them motor one and motor two. Those are 50 amps coming straight from here. Uh, let me show you the fuse box too. This is the cover. On the fuse cover, there's a light off, couple of USB C. So we got right here and right here. It's two strips of fuses that you cannot really even check because they're covered, they're right here. The only way to really check those out it will be to remove the fuse box. You can see through kind of like a glass. I don't see any burn. But we don't know if we have a wiring issue in between. So that's what we're here. So let me check that out. Let me get out pin to check that looks like uh, let's see the size of that so those should be let's see if they said yeah hot hot all the time again I'm gonna use just the ground in here on the strut tower and I'm going to use this uh, self-made 2 amps uh, test light so I could probably get the I got a halogen ball but let me make sure we got power so it should be the upper ones in here had all the time yep and yeah so fuses is are fine which was my first main concern so we got power the next uh, step, uh, step will be to check the actual booster pump, which is on that side. Let me, again, check the wiring. I'm gonna check a little bit more in here. We got a few powers and grounds that we can check as well. So let me read it. All right, let's see if we can uh, try the powers and grounds on this uh, skip module. This is called a skid control ECU with actuator, brake booster, with master cylinder assembly. Alright, so we should have two more powers, which should be um, yellow one, which is coming from this same fuse box. It's a 30 amp fuse. Uh, it says ABS1 fuse. Let's see what I put it on. Cover. So ABS one, yeah, it's on the same strip that I cannot check in there. So again, it is um, hot all the time, so it should be no power. I mean, a problem. And by being a 30 amp, most likely is this wire here. So okay, we have now. I'm using another test light as a halogen bulb with like 4.2 amps of draw every time so at least it's low test I'm gonna check these uh, powers again okay what's happening ah those are powers so actually that's I am power so why is that yellow I should probably the wrong wire let's see yeah the yellow is the upper one so the white one is actually a ground Yep, well, at least I check it one ground. I did that backwards. All right, so we got the test light connected to ground. Take this nut out. And put this where you guys can see better and I don't burn anything. Right there is the best place. I didn't burn the fuse. I mean, they both, this is still good. All right, so yellow should be the upper one then. 
and we got power in there too should be another one coming from a 7.5 fuse so it should be a small wire pink 14 and it's right next to an orange one and a yellow it's supposed to be that 15 yellow an orange one and a pink the color they give you are a little hard to see but yeah this pink it should be the first one on this row right here so yes we have the power right there now we have two ignition uh, so let me go and put the ignition Yeah, if we set up more codes, I mean, we need to do testing, so. All right, so we have a blue wire on pin 12, so it should be two cables backward from that. Let me sure I'm going the right sequence, and yes, so it will be the third pin on the upper one, so right here, and we got that power. Now one more. The light blue that is actually pin seven pin sixteen. If this is pin fifteen on this side, so yeah, light blue on this side, so it will be the first one on the second row. And yes, we got that ignition. See one more. Let me see where the, the dust doesn't go to the module. So one, two. Now we check all the powers. Now let's check the grounds. Then let me now reverse the test light. We're going to take the ignition off. So what I'm decided to do since we're here is to check all the powers and all the grounds and I start to go. I mean, already had that set up and ready to do the testing on the other side for the wires. Those are heavy wire, heavy cable wires. Uh, they control that motor. It's probably like a two-stage pump, and it has two different signals for so two different motors. I have to see actually that very well on the diagram. All right, let's uh, check the grounds now. Looks like all the all the white and blacks are grounds. So yes, and they all meet on one spot. So that's that's a little bit of a except for one. Let me check this. Thirteen. This is the ground too. Where that one goes. Thirteen. Left side of engine compartment. Hmm. Left side. That will be on this side. All right, so let's check those, those grounds, see what we can find. So there we go from pin 23 to pin 28. So let me see. So 16. Uh, what we got here? I promise I don't have any numbers. Oh, actually it will be from 1 to 15. So 16 to 31. So all the grounds should be here. All right, so let's check our test light again, make sure it's connected correctly. That is a little too strong for those wires, but I mean, it's not really that much. It's a 4.2 amp. I mean, it's, we're not, you know, testing it through the computer. It's just needing it to turn that on so let's see the first one will be 23 so 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 we got a good one good one good one good one and good one so let me count how many we got here one so 16 17 18 19 
20, 21, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Okay, hold on one second. So we don't have 15 pins in here. Uh, one, so two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve pins we got. Okay, they're counting this one. And I don't know what else. Because everything has been working good as far as that number. Yeah, they're counting that as pin one. Pin four is empty. And pin ten is empty. And I don't see any empty here. Well, actually it is pin four. One, two, three, four is empty. Starting 16, and it looks like it's ending into 28. Because I think, well, let me see 16, yeah, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So there should be another ground here. Mm, I'm connected the same way. Let me check this one here, yes. Nope. Well, that is actually a black cable. And yeah, the black is the next one. So I might be counting, I'm counting something wrong. So we have all the grounds in there. And I'm load testing. Should be how many grounds? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six grounds. So, one, one, two, three, four, five, five. Let's say six. One, two, three, one, two, three. We got an empty space in there, so definitely not going to give you anything in there. And that's fine. So the next one should not even be a ground. And it's not, it's just a white one, so that's correct. And they're saying that we should have six in here. Two, four, five. And we have four four grounds in there. So let's see where that one twenty eight is. Oh, I know where that is. I'm not counting this one here. And I already checked that one. We know that it's a very good ground. So this is our ground that I am using counting as number six. So we got all the powers, all the ignitions, and all the grounds. I don't have any actual damage on the module, but again, nothing either to not be, or not let the um, booster work. It's weird code, is just like a booster relay. I haven't found none relay on on any of the boxes, this, it is for the brakes, at least, you know, it's, in, it's internal here. So let me make sure the ignition is off. Actually, before I do that, I have to check those wires from here to there. So let me just make sure the ignition is off. Okay, right now I'm going to do a few tests for the lines that are supplying the power to that motor one and motor two in there, which are these two wires. So we have the upper wires are the power supply from the fuse, goes to the module, it does its logic and then control those two. So the bottom cables we have, 
a black one and a blue one same thing is in there so the connector on this side is the black one and then the connector on the other side is the blue one they both have their own ground which is connected someplace else on the left side front of the car which we will check those grounds as well so my main first test will be to check if this is sure to power or sure to ground okay we got the test light connected to power so if any of these wires is shorted to ground it will light up and nothing so we can do same thing are we short to power no nope. and now so that at least tell me that we have no wiring issue from here to that shorted we can still have an open so the next test I'm going to put this test light away hopefully you guys can hear me well so the next test will be I'm going to jump this fuse power to each one of the motor phases or not motor phases motor one and motor two and check with the test light on that side so we know that these two are powered I'm very confident we're not shorted to power the ground all right so I am connected to the black one I have a test light in here with a less uh, amp I mean again this is just for testing this is a 2 amp so we're going to check the black one should have power here and the bus you guys can see I'm going to leave it on And you guys are gonna uh, find out that as soon as I unplug this in here, that this light should turn off. And it did. All right, I'm gonna move it, the wire to the blue cable now, which is the other, which is the other motor. And, uh, okay, so same thing. So as far as wiring from here to there, we got no issue either. Now the next test will be to check the ground. We could connect the test light to, actually, let me turn this off in here. I'm gonna use that heavy one, you know, with the halogen to do that. Hopefully this reach there. I was tested something else. Okay, it's working. So what I'm going to do? Okay, I just got this connected. Set it up in here. We will move that from there. Now we're gonna check the, the ground side. Okay, then got this connected here. I got power. I got a ground in there. External is it? Let me shake it in here. This microphone so you guys can hear me better. All right, so that's that's in here. So Toyota uses a lot. I mean, most since I ever know black. So why would that uh, black is a ground always in Toyota? But I always make sure that you check your diagrams. So that is a good ground. This is a good round. <coughs> All right, guys. So uh, we have no wiring issue. And still, we have those codes. This is. Uh, let me read it again. So we have the pump motor relay. The accumulator lower pressure is because they're being moving the car. So I know right now that since the pump is not working, we have no pressure in there as far as the booster. Brake booster pump motor on time abnormally long. All right, so we have no problems with that. We have no problems with any of the wiring the next thing I can do 
is uh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use the hook. Let me stop the video and set something else in here, guys. Be right back. All right, guys. Uh, I moved the car a little forward just to check underneath. I couldn't find anything underneath, so I went ahead and connect the scope. I'm using on this on this time. I'm using the snap-on um, scope. This is just a simple capture. Um, so I have channel one connected to one of the motors and channel B onto the other motor. And uh, with the motor connected, you can see it's going from. Actually, let me get out of this one. You can see that it's going from uh, what is it? Eight volts to ten and a half, twelve and a half volts. So and it's, it's trying to you know cycle. And I know that probably that's a computer strategy to see if uh, if he finds you know the solution or you know to get the the, the code. So uh, let me see, make sure I'm in the right module also yeah okay so we're in the brake booster we have these uh codes i think i showed it to you that before we have the brake booster pump motor on time abnormal alone from motor relay and blah 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 so let me show you what i'm did here so again i have the scope connected to each one of the motor uh, lines which is the blue and the black right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect a test light on each one of those lines to try to make the computer think that we have a motor working so for me what we have here is an open on the motor internals you know like the commutators or whatever so let, let me set that up and show you this again look that we have those two make, make sure these these two are going to be erased pretty much the brake booster and the pump motor relay if my assumption is correct and we can make that work all right so hold on one second guys to set this up Okay, right now I got both of the test lights connected, one to each one of the motors, uh, they supply power and ground. So we have, as you can see, uh, switching. That is a computer strategy to check for a normal resistance and, you know, operation on, on the pumps. You can see in the scope that we're going on and off. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, clear the codes. Because I think that's a strategy for the, from the computer to again do a diagnosis and I am com completely correct. So as you can see right now the pump and the pump relay codes are completely gone. Of course we're going to have a low pressure in the accumulator. Forget about the lower one. I create that myself trying to you know to diagnose this thing. So again this is a way of procedure that you can fake or make the computer think that we have what, what the, the computer needs. So that is a, a definitely for sure a brake booster pump uh, problem. No wiring, everything is in there good. So uh, I'm going to call that a, as, a, as a problem and then order parts. Okay, just as a extra diagnosis uh, information and procedures for you guys too. Uh, I wanted to test the uh, resistance across the motor windings, uh, you know, ground and power pose of each of the motors. Then you check the, the resistance. I went over to Identifix and I found, you know, all the information we need regarding uh, the code that we have. Let me scroll up so you guys can see this. Well, let me show you what I have here. So this is exactly how it looks in there. So let's say, you know, this is motor one and this is motor two. Um, we have the power uh, wire will be in this one, the BM2. And in this one, which is not showing too much, just will be, you know, battery motor one, then ground one and ground two. So what they're saying in here is uh, in between BM1 and ground 1, which you always have below 10, 10 ohms. And that's the same thing for the other motor, you know, BM2 to ground 2. And then in between BM1 and BM2, which you always have below 1 ohm. All right, so that's make sure they're not shorted together. Same thing with the grounds, ground 1 and ground 2. There is an extra wire in here, as you can notice, it's number 1 in here. <coughs> I'm sorry. 
I think that one is for um, troubleshooting purposes on their own computer. So again, uh, I have this uh, digital multimeter ready to go here. So I'm going to set up this one into ohms. Let me see what I can put this so we both can see. Turn the light on here. Yeah, that's better without the light. <coughs> At least for you guys. Pin wise, uh, I'm sorry for the shaking and the movement. You know, I'm doing the best I can with one hand and the other one. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from these two terminals on one motor and then the two terminals oh, sorry you're not seeing anything in there so from these two terminals measuring resistance on this motor which let me so that's what I'm doing right now and we have 9 mega ohms 10 increasing so uh, without a doubt we have an issue here so I'm going to connect to the other motor. You guys can see very well in there, so I'm going to leave the light on so I can see too. That's the next one. Oh, let me see if it is, uh, okay, now you guys can see. And in this case, I'm not connected to the, to the other one yet. So it's a little hard with one hand, guys, so bear with me. Okay, with the other one, we got 14 ohms, so yeah, this is definitely, <coughs> definitely no good in there. I hope I read that correctly. Let me go back to disconnect A56 and A57 connectors, measure the resistance according to balance in the table below. Yeah, I know that I haven't opened the doors or anything for this. And I mean, with those values, do we really want to check the resistance in between BM1 and BM2, and then ground one and ground two? No, I mean, we already checked uh, enough. We know that we have a higher, higher resistance, so we have a problem with those two motors. Um, the other test you can do is uh, with, uh, of course, these uh, motors connected, uh, you can put an end clamp, you know, by just removing one of those uh, protections in here. And you can set up an end clamp, which I think I have one handy. You can get, you know, like this ones, very cheap. I got this one from Amazon. So let me turn the camera one second off and put this on. All right, again, uh, I have the clamp connected into one of the signal wires. You can pick up, you know, the ground or the power either way. So right now, with no brake apply, it's off. So we have zero resistance. One uh, uh, good thing to know about this system is that every time you open the door, it will try to activate these pumps for you to, like, you know, use a regular brake. So I'm going to leave you guys here with the camera, and I'm going to go and open the door. So let me set up the camera right here. Hopefully you guys can see well. Let me see how can I set you guys in here. So do we have any change? I don't expect to have any change because I think we have an open motor. So, but I know we had the activation because we were seeing that on the scope. So we have the power, we have the ground, which we have some amperage in there. And I know we don't have any because the pump is bad. 